So I've had the iPhone 13 Pro Max since Christmas of last year. That's Christmas 2021. I've had the Space Gray 256 GB 13 Pro Max. So I had the 11 Pro Max for two years and a few months. I got it from the States. I did not buy it locally. Um, from the States, it cost me about a lakh, you know, a lakh, lakh, 10,000, something like that. And um, if you get it from India, it's about um, duty and all that. And I'm just doing all this so I can be completely specific with you because I believe in being specific about it. Um, anyways, coming back, I paid a lakh, 10,000 for this phone and that is the moral of the story here, guys. I paid 1 lakh 10,000 rupees. Is it worth 1 lakh 10,000? I'm gonna tell you whether or not I, I regret buying this. But first, let me say that I love the iPhone. And uh, before getting this phone, I had two SIM cards. One SIM card was being used for the 11 Pro Max and the other SIM card was being used with the S20. Now I've got an eSIM. So I have two uh, SIM cards on this one device, you know. And um, now I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of it. Before I begin talking about the pros and cons, I'm just gonna say that I'm gonna keep this phone for a, a long time to come. I have no intentions of changing it. I don't wanna change my phone every year. I, I normally um, refrain from buying new Apple products, but in the past few years, I've been doing that. I used to just get, you know, a used electronic and just use it forever after and I would save like 10, 20 thousand rupees for it, you know, but um, not everybody can do that because not everybody understands technology, you know, to that level and sometimes you, if you don't know much about technology, I don't think you should delve in the used market. Um, but yes, if you are looking to buy like an 11 Pro Max, I think right now is a perfect time to do that. If you've never had an iPhone, you can get one for 40 grand, 50 grand. Going back to the 13 Pro Max, uh, let's talk about five things which have shocked me because I don't believe in good things, I don't believe in pros. If you are watching this video, there's a good chance you are already familiar with the iOS and the Apple ecosystem, so I will not bore you with all that. I'm going to talk about the level, I mean, I have no longer, I no longer have dropped calls. I haven't had a single dropped calls. I live in NCR, which is Delhi, New Delhi, Gurgaon, Noida. It's called NCR, right? National Capital Region. Um, when I'm traveling from Delhi to um, Noida, there's a DND, and normally if I was on the phone on, uh, there, I would get a, a drop call. While returning around um, Ashram, I would get a drop call, but no longer. With this guy, I don't see that drop call anymore. I've also noticed that 4G um, is a lot improved, like. Uh, uh, what I mean to say is that my speeds earlier used to be, let's say, X amount. Now they are X plus at least 25%. I'm getting good signals, but I did not get good signals. Thank God my city doesn't have 5G. I think I don't want 5G ever. I'm okay with 4G forever. I'm completely fine. That's a separate topic. But everything on this, uh, with respect to um, your call quality and reception, when I'm talking on the phone, the purpose of the phone is to make phone calls. And for that, this is fantastic. It uses the, um, I get signals in my house where I never used to get signals. Like I was saying, there are many spots in my house which are very choppy earlier, but now even if I have 4G, I get, I can watch videos on 1080p on YouTube. So the speed is very good. Um, that's been very comforting. You know, for somebody who, um, I never had a lot of issues with Apple with respect to that, but things have improved so drastically now that I have to point it out that this really is very good with network reception. It really is very good on the Wi-Fi. It is really blazing fast. It's almost always as fast as you want it to be or faster than your expectation. And that is saying a lot. For example, um, I think it takes about hardly 25 seconds for this to boot up. I'm, shut, I'm shutting it down right now. And while it's doing that, I'm gonna talk about the second thing I like most about this phone. Again, this is gonna be a shocker, but I love the um, I love the speaker phone. When I'm playing music, this sounds so good. It's like me carrying my own speaker. And this is also true for the 13 Pro Mac, uh, 13 Pro, the regular one. I just started, by the way, let's see how many seconds it takes. This is also true for the 13 Pro, which my wife has. Um, she has the same thing in gold. 
256 GB again. The sound quality is fantastic. It is absolutely amazing with how good the loudspeaker is. Not just so, so there you have it. Like to about 15, 16 seconds for it to completely load. And things are the way they look. Just because you see a screen, it doesn't mean that it's still loading in the background. Everything is loaded and ready to go on the phone in less than 25 seconds. That's fantastic. Um, so the second thing I like a lot about it is the, the speaker, of course. Like it's super, super, super loud. And I like that a lot. Let me just give you an example. I'm not going to play the full song, but uh, for example, this is some Punjabi music, which I've been listening to recently. And I'm just going to play that for you guys. Just a moment, please. Another song, just so you get an idea, because... That's the way you do it. The speaker is absolutely fantastic. So that's my second best feature. The first was call reception. Second is the speaker phone. It's incredible how loud it gets. What is the third thing I love about this phone? I can't believe I'm gonna say this, um, but the battery, they have improved so much. And I'll tell you why they have improved. Um, so today is May the 4th. May the 4th be with you, boom. Um, anyways, I got this on 25th December. Today is May 4th and I'm gonna show you my battery health and then I'm gonna tell you how you can get this battery health. That a focus, that's my battery health, 100%. Now to prove to you that this phone is actually the date I'm saying it is, I'm gonna show you that the limited warranty is available the 26th of December 2022, which means I started the phone around 27th or 26th of December last year. So one year. Now, um, what, I'm, what am I trying to get, trying to get at? Usually, when I use the 11 Pro Max, I still remember after five years, I was so disappointed because the battery level was down to 94%. Not only has Apple in, uh, like uh, really improved its battery performance, I haven't seen much of a degradation in the six months. Can I, can I, can I say six months? Nah, that's not fair. In the five months of owning this and 10 days, I haven't seen that much of battery degradation and I'll tell you why that has happened so you understand where I'm coming from. This is critical. If you hate my video, if you hate me, if you hate my accent, I hope you understand this. It is critical that you do this. This is a tip which nobody is talking about, but I'm telling you. Since I've owned this for five years and 10 days, this has completely drained out just two or three times, three times maximum. I haven't done a battery test on this because I don't want it to drain out. It has drained out completely just three times, which means that below zero, like 0% zero is gone that to that level just three times. What I've tried to do is I, as soon as the battery re reaches like 40%, I charge it. So when it reaches 37%, I charge it. When it reaches, uh, I never let it reach 20%, almost never. At 31%, that's a signal to my brain, go and charge your phone. So I, okay, I can't believe I'm still going. I charge the phone at 31% and I charge it to let's say 89%. That's, that's like a good number. 80% is not a good number for me or 78%. Sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I just charge you 78% and I take it off. And I keep doing that. So I keep going between 30% and 90%, 30% and 90%. I never let it drain completely. This was a suggestion given to me by, by my friend Saurav Verma, who is also a geek. And he's had his iPhone for two months more than I've had mine for, I think. Yeah, he got his in October or early November last year. And he has the exact same phone with the exact same specification and color. And he lives in London and his battery is still at 100%. Now where you live and where you reside is very critical to how your battery does and I say that because heat is the biggest enemy of battery life and your battery particles and component, the more heat they are exposed to, the, the more likely they are to actually suffer. So the third best thing about this phone is the battery life and I also want to show you how, how much screen time you can expect. Um, you can expect between 7 and 9 hours of screen on time. Um, even with two SIM cards, I have an eSIM and a physical SIM, even with two SIM cards, I'm able to get at least, uh, I want to say, um, how much battery do I get? So let's say if I leave the house in the morning and I'm at 90%, I'm never at 90% to be fair. Let's say if I start my day at 90% and I work out and all that, um, by the time I reach work, I'm at 70% 
and by the time I leave from work, it probably is down to about 30%, at which point I have the automatic signal in my brain to charge it. So, but I know, I'll tell you what happens if, if I charge it to 100% and I take it off the charger in the morning, um, I'm looking at uh, 25% by 8 p.m. So from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., it'll consume 75%. This is on a very heavy work day where I, ha I am constantly on WhatsApp, where I'm constantly on the phone call, where I'm constantly using the GPS navigation, where I'm constantly using Google Maps and all that kind of thing. WhatsApp takes a lot of time in you from your life. I don't use Instagram, the application. I don't do much surfing. I'm mostly using YouTube. I'm using Spotify. I'm using the navigation. When I'm using the navigation, Spotify is playing in the background. What this has done is that it now acts like two phones in one phone and that is commendable. So battery is very critical for that. And despite having two SIM cards, um, the battery life is, is still at least one and a half days. But then, like I said, don't try to be a hero with this. Charge your phone when it gets to 30% or 40%. Charge it to 90. You know, for, keep it between 40 and 90. That's a healthy number to keep it between. I Today, I charged my phone when it was at 47%. I charge it to 85%. I like to keep it between that ballpark. And I'm able to use a lot of it, by the way. The other day, I went out and I was very concerned because I was going out at 8.20 p.m. And it was at 51%. And I said, oh my God, so I put on the battery saving mode for some time or whatever. And I remember at 1 p.m. the next day I got back home. Don't ask me, I was out somewhere and then I was slept, I woke. And 1 p.m. the next day it was at 11%. So entire night of partying and click shooting videos and clicking photographs and all that kind of thing and the GPS navigation and then booking an Uber and looking at the GPS on the way back home at 8 a.m. in the morning and then sleeping and it dropped only 39% in from 8 p.m. till about 1 p.m. So that's almost like 16 hours of use, man. 16, I don't know, I'm, I'm I think 17 hours of use. Yeah, so battery is fantastic basically. I'm gonna do a battery test. The fourth thing I like a lot about this phone is of course the selfie camera and um, the photo, photo camera. The 11 Pro Max had an outstanding camera, probably an A plus is the grade I would give the iPhone 11 Pro Max and needless to say with the 11, I mean with the 13 Pro Max things have improved. Nighttime video and nighttime um, photographs are still not that good on the selfie, but on the rear camera, it really shines through because it has this extra nighttime lens, I guess, or whatever. It has the sensor also, the AR sensor, which helps it in that. Um, I don't know which one is what, but it does a pretty good job in nighttime photography, the rear camera. But if you're taking a selfie and it's not very well lit, this screen tends to be your flash. Those are a bit, I don't know, they're a bit uh, calm, chill out, not very good, but uh, they get the job done. You know, like, let me just take a random selfie. It, I think it has a very good computation. So I just took a random selfie. Okay, I look put like Tinu Anand, but that's just me, I guess, you know. Yeah, I look pretty funny, but the photograph came out all right. It's a decent photograph. So the camera is again uh, that much better. It, it does feel like it's two generations above the 11 Pro Max. And now when I look at the photographs of the 11 Pro Max, I see a bit off white balance. Um, I'm gonna put some photographs so that you can be the decider of that. Many of my videos, which I have recently done, like the Maldives trip and the blogging are all, and the Mumbai vlog, all of that were done from this iPhone. And the quality is very acceptable, I guess, for, uh, for vlogging. So if you don't have any special camera, and you don't want to invest in a standalone camera. I think the camera does justice. Along with the camera, I also want to talk about the brightness of the display. I think it's a beautiful display no matter what I'm watching. For some reason, YouTube on my, my phone is another level and experience, just like YouTube on my MacBook. I have a MacBook Pro Retin, uh, like Retina M1, you know, the 2020 version, which is like one year and one month old. I have to do a review of that also. So if you are into an Apple ecosystem, or if you like the Apple product, if you're considering bashing on Apple also, you need to hear my, my take on it before you do anything of that nature. Um, I just want to show you a video just to show you the quality of... Um, on the back side or something they have. You see that? Look at the quality, man. Look at the quality of the screen. And all of these photographs were taken on this very phone. 
you know, I, I sometimes don't have my access to my other camera and I want to do a quick uh, video and that's when I use my, my phone and it never disappoints. But again, there's a quality difference. I can tell the quality difference to be fair. But definitely it has uh, improved substantially for my streaming. Could it have been a little better? I just hope they do more work on the front facing camera. I still don't think it's perfect. It's 8 on 10, it's not 10 on 10. I want Apple to increase the bar on the front facing camera and for it to improve by at least 25, 30%, especially for selfies and for selfie videos. You know, I'm more of a video guy and the rear camera is excellent for the video, but the front camera, I'm not really sure. Um, let's come to my last point now. I think this is the best phone in the world. I can't imagine having uh, owning a Samsung in this day and age because they have a bit of a flawed operating system and uh, Samsung also tends to hurt my eyes. I think with respect to display, which is already my fourth favorite, and with respect to the entire package, I think it is definitely worth a lot of money. I don't think it's worth 1,40,000. I'll be the first to let you know that. But yes, it's definitely worth 1,40,000. Or one lakh ten thousand. If if you are getting the phones from uh, America somehow, I think you're better off doing that. Save that twenty thirty thousand and invest it in Paytm stock. I hope that goes up someday. Um, again, for typing, again this is a great experience. My fifth favorite thing about this is how good iOS, the entire operating system, functions on this. I think it's a breeze. Even iMovie, for that matter, I can actually do pretty decent iMovie um, stuff because the speed of the processor is so, so fast. Like iMovie is a breeze to do. Every single application you wanna use on this, it is a fun, it is a fun time to, to do all that. So my fifth thing would be iOS is, a, is still improving and on this phone you get the best version of iOS. Um, I mean, I've already spoken about all the hardware components, but iOS is one major reason you should get this. The 13 Pro Max has amazing iOS. Apple is still very, 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 very miserly about a lot of things. They don't want to give it to you for free. For example, this phone doesn't have, um, it has 256 GB of data, but the iCloud you get is only 5 GB free. I pay about 250 bucks a month for that. I pay more money for Apple Music. Spotify works like a dream on this phone. Um, so fifth thing would be software. You can imagine what all I mean by that. Okay, there's no specific feature which stands out.